if you're more certain the feeling you're gonna get when you give something away rather than receive something for yourself, that's something to experiment with and see what that feels like. And then even to your point, it's really hard to invest in yourself if you don't believe in yourself. So instead of just investing in the charity of your choice, which I think is amazing, what if you invested a hundred bucks into your own personal development and a hundred bucks into the charity of your choice? That way you grow and you grow, you know, the world in a positive way. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another episode of Next Level University, where we help you level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed yesterday's episode, episode number 1,549. It's not your responsibility to fix anyone, unless you decide. Today, for episode number 1,550, my apologies if I said the wrong one in the previous episode, I mislabeled it, are you too selfless? Alan has a really good example story and the reason that we're doing this episode, but I mentioned this on the podcast a while ago. This was at the very beginning of the year. I went to Florida to speak at a podcast event, and on the flight home, I remember I was sitting on... I don't don't remember the exact way I was sitting in terms of the middle seat, uh, the aisle seat, or the window seat, but I remember there was a a parent and a and a son who came and sat next to me. And I remember thinking to myself, should I give up my seat for them to make it easier for them? So I think I was on the outside and they were on the inside. And I remember thinking, should I just say, hey, do you guys want to sit on the outside and I'll just sit on the inside near the window? Because I'm sure you're, you and or your child, you might have to bring them to the bathroom multiple times on the flight. I'm probably not going to go to the bathroom at all because I never do on planes. It's just something weird about me. I just would rather sit in my seat and suffer. So yeah, you want to switch seats. I didn't end up asking this person, or maybe I did, I don't know. But I remember we did an episode about it after. And it was very much along the same thought process of, am I too selfless for that? Is that me making myself suffer for someone else when I don't really have to do that? And then we dug under that. We were talking about self-worth and self-belief and what is uncomfortable for me and my standards and stuff like that. So I just want to connect that to the episode that we're doing today. Maybe that's an example of what being too selfless, quote-unquote, could mean for you. But you wanted to do this episode. You had the better example than I did. What is it, sir? (laughs) (laughs) Strong opening. I appreciate Uh, that very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I... I do believe that the listeners of this show are most likely heart-driven but no BS. That's that's what we are all about, heart-driven but no BS. And, and where this originated that Kevin's referencing is we do philanthropy every December. We have two different initiatives that we're connected to. And one of them is the Next Level Hope Foundation. And we do a holiday event. We've done it for two years now. It just went really, really well. So thank you for everyone who contributed. It was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anyone who attended, thank you for coming. But one thing that I noticed is that we have a really, really good track record in our community when it comes to achieving our GoFundMe goals, Mm. which is awesome. And I take nothing from that. It's nothing short of absolutely amazing. But what I've found a little bit fascinating, and this is what we want to dig under, is that I think our community... Not everyone, but I think our community tends to be more generous with others than they are with themselves. And I think that might be connected to self-worth. And I want to come in with humility with that because I don't want to guarantee that that's the case, but here's my thesis. Group coaching, for example, is for listeners only $97 a month. And I know that that program will change your life. And it doesn't really matter if I know that. What matters is if the listeners know that, if you know that. If you don't believe that, That's step one. How do we get you to believe this program can change your world? Okay. Number two is even if you do believe that group coaching might be good and might be good for you, are, do you have the self-worth where you are worth it? Are you worth the $97? Because our community is so generous with these kids that we donate for. And I appreciate that. And I take nothing from that, but are you as generous with yourself? And I think that that's really what we're talking about here is are you too selfless or are you too selfish? I seriously doubt 
that our listener base tends to be too selfish because that's not common. I mean, all of the listeners that I've met tend to, they ha- tend to, I'll just say some things, they tend to, from my perspective, have more self-belief than they think. They tend to have lower self-worth than what is optimal. And so if you're out there and you're listening or watching this and you think, you know what, I do invest more in other people than I do in myself. Then hopefully what you can question is at least challenge that. Why? Why do I invest more in other people than I do in myself? Am I too selfless? Because there's there's really three different avenues you can take. I say this to the NLU team often. I say, what if what's best for you is what's best for the world? And we've done episodes on that in the past. And Amy L. on the team, Amy Lenius, she loves that quote. I do believe, and I'll use Amy as an example, she wouldn't mind, what's best for Amy is what's best for the world because she's an extremely loving, extremely generous, extremely wonderful human. Now, I wouldn't say that to everyone, though. I can think of some people from my past that I think are narcissistic and selfish. I think they're toxic, and I'm going to call a spade a spade. I would never tell them, hey, what's best for you is what's best for the world. Mm. No, no, no. If anything, you're overly selfish, and you could really do with some, some humble pie. That's avenue one. Avenue two is what I shared about Amy. What's best for you is what's best for the world because you tend to be selfless, over-serving at the expense of self, maybe being a little more quote-unquote selfish, aka investing in self, would be better. And then you've got this this sort of middle ground of someone who invests in themselves, grows themselves, and then because they grow, they have more to give. And so I try to call it sustainable giving. So instead of just investing in the charity of your choice, which I think is amazing, what if you invested 100 bucks into your own personal development and 100 bucks into the charity of your choice. That way you grow and you grow, you know, the world in a positive way. And I think that one of them is sustainable and the other one is sometimes martyrdom. And so if you feel like you've been a little bit overly martyring of yourself or sacrificing of self or overly selfless at the expense of yourself, then maybe this is something that you can work on and learn to buy the book or buy the course, or or start group, co- group coaching, or do one-on-one coaching, or get a therapist, or get that, I don't know, um, go to that dance class that you want to take, or to, to your point, the jujitsu gym that you go to, right? I mean, how long did it take for you to actually invest in yourself something that fulfills you at that level? I realize it's expensive, but yeah. I think that people who have struggle with self-worth myself included sometimes we struggle to invest in ourselves and sometimes we do more for others than we're willing to do for ourselves and i think that that can be dangerous if we're not at least on top of it two things i used to think philanthropy was some sort of study of the bones like That's anthropology paleontology well anthropology is one too uh, paleontology paleontology is the study of fossils sorry so oh. get out of here with that <laughs> I believe. I believe. I think fossils are bones, though, right? Well, yeah, but not all, I don't think, right? I don't know. I don't know. But I remember... Maybe an- paleontology is like dinosaurs, right? I don't... Not necessarily. I don't think so. I don't know anybody who does that, so maybe if we did, I could ask them. But that's nor here nor there. Every time I hear philanthropy, it just makes me think of digging stuff up for some reason. It always <laughs> has. That's part one. Part two, I can definitely resonate with this because I think I had a lot of experience with this in the past. I was very quick to to invest in someone else before I would invest in myself. And for me, I think it's because I knew what I was going to get. So I would much rather give someone $100 or donate to someone's GoFundMe for $100 than buy a $100 course for sure, still to this day. To this day. Because I know what donating, I know the feeling that donating will give me. Versus I don't really know what that $100 course is going to give me. So I think certainty is one thing. If you're more certain the feeling you're going to get when you give something away rather than receive something for yourself, that's something to experiment with and see what that feels like. And then even to your point, 
it's really hard to invest in yourself if you don't believe in yourself. Yeah, definitely. And I have, I, I definitely understand that too. Because in the past, it would be really hard for me to spend, let's just say, how much is an Audible subscription per month? Fourteen ninety nine. I so think. So even that in the beginning, it was hard for me to say. Well, it's fifteen bucks a month. I don't know what books am I going to read. There just was so much uncertainty around whether or not it was actually going to help me to the degree that I thought it would. So I definitely I understand and I resonate more with this topic than I thought I would. Because in the beginning, I didn't have any belief in myself. And when I would buy books. And I'm not saying you don't have belief in yourself, whether you're watching or listening. I'm just saying that this was my experience and maybe it'll resonate with you where you are. I would buy books and I might regret it right after I buy it. Of I really hope I get my money's worth out of this. And now in retrospect, you're going to get $15 worth of value out of this, most likely. Yeah. Even if you just learn one thing that pays off. But I understand that at a deeper level, than I ever have. And here's the other thing too. I've never paid for a coach in this department. I've had you the whole time. I've never yeah. paid. I've never paid for a coach. I've never paid for a coaching session. I've never paid for a mentor. I've never paid for podcast help. I've never paid for any of that. So that's another thing is maybe it's just something where when you don't have experience with it, you're a little bit more gun shy. What's going on guys? My name is Austin and I've been working with Kevin for a few months now. If there's one thing that I find super valuable is his expertise on how to position the podcast to the right audience and fit the content into the overall business plan. And frankly, when we work together, he challenges me a lot. There were some tough conversations that he initiated with me so that I can really grow in the business. Besides the coaching part, the editing team does amazing work with editing and show notes and staying on top of all communications. Overall, my experience working with Kevin has really been top notch. I would also say, I mean, if, if you don't, I mean, think about all the things that have to align for you to pay for a book or pay for a coach. I was talking about this earlier because I'm actually coaching the team on coaching, which is really cool. Jerry Ann, Lizzie, and Amy L. Shout out to them. And I said, think about, so I was on the phone, uh, the phone, I was on Zoom, I was on Zoom. On the landline. With, yeah, I was on a landline, pay phone, I was on a pay phone oh. the other day, no. I was on Zoom with a young man who's 16 years old who was listening to our podcast, and yeah, 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 nice. and he said, I, I, I found out that you coach an 18 year old, and I was like, yeah, totally, love it, one of my favorite things in the world. If that person is listening, you know who you are. Love it. Just ask me so many existential questions about life. It's the best. I get to philosophize. But anyways, so this person reached out, booked on my calendar, half hour, and, and we talked. And when he found out the price, he was like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think that's that's like a day's work for me. Again, he's young. He's 16. And it's not that much. It, it, it really isn't. But anyways, so uh, my point with this is I was talking to Amy, Jerry Ann, and Lizzie earlier, and I said, I want to coach this person. I know this person will benefit. I'm certain of it. And I do believe that if I had me at his age, I mean, it would have changed my whole world. Mm. Okay? So I already believe 10 out of 10 that I'm the right coach for him, and I believe 10 out of 10 that I want to do this because he's humble, he's eager, he came with questions, I'm pumped. So how do I make this happen? I know it's what's best for him, but he, that doesn't matter. He doesn't know it's what's best for him. So I asked the question. I said, how do I get him to believe that this will be worth it? Because I know that it will be. I know that he'll make more money. I know he'll be more successful. I know he'll have better relationships. I know that he'll be healthier. I know that at 35 years old, I've learned so much the hard way that I could teach him. And yes, he'll learn some things the hard way, but I guarantee you that I can help him and guide him in ways that are far beyond his current comprehension. And I know that it'll be worth the price. I know that. It doesn't matter. He doesn't know that. And so I talked to them about this, and I said, Here, think about this. This is what has to line up. So in order for you to coach with Kevin, if you're out there listening or watching, in order for you to coach with Kevin, you have to believe in NLU. You have to believe in Kevin. 
you have to believe in yourself enough to believe that you're going to implement what Kevin tells you. Mm. You also have to believe it'll be worth it. And you have to believe that Kevin is the right fit for you. And you have to believe that Kevin's the best coach for you for the best price compared to everyone else who you might be able to coach with. Like, think about how hard it is to align all that. Yeah. We wonder why sales is so difficult. I mean, otherwise, you have to take a huge chance. What if you don't believe in Kevin? You don't believe it'll be worth it. You don't believe in yourself or your own brighter future. Why would you ever invest? Yeah. And so to bring this to back to self-worth and self-belief, which is where we started of what if you're willing to invest more in others than yourself because you don't believe in yourself enough or because you don't believe you'll be worth it? Why would, why would someone invest in a company they didn't think was going to grow? And a lot of this is unconscious. If I buy stock in a company, I believe that it'll be worth more in the future. I believe it'll be worth it. And so people don't take action. So we get stuck in this conundrum of, I don't believe in myself and I don't believe I'm worth it. So I'm not going to invest in myself, which what? Makes you believe in yourself even less. And now you're even less worth it. And so you get stuck in this cycle, but yet you see other people's potential, but you don't see your own. And hopefully that mirror gets flipped in this episode and you say, you know what? I am investing more in other people than I am in myself. Let me flip the script. Let me invest in my own personal development. Let me grow. And when I grow, now I can have more to give. And I think that that's a virtuous cycle that if you do that, you will build self-belief and self-worth assuming you get the right coaches and the right courses. Obviously, if you get hoodwinked or you do something that isn't valuable and is a bag of air, so to speak, um, it's like opening the chip bag. We've all done it. We've opened the bag of chips and there's only a third full and it's still delicious. It's, it's but. devastating news. <laughs> it's devastating. We, you and I aren't parents, but we we have many parents on the team. Everybody on the team that's a parent is a mother. Maybe one, one yep. father, one father. And yep. I can't claim to know what that's like. But I imagine if you want to talk about selfless, having a little, having a little one, you and I got a little taste of it, Next Level Hope Foundation, running around <laughs> with kids. And one of the parents said to me, you get a chance to eat yet? And I said, no, 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 I'm not going to eat. I won't be, I probably won't eat until this is over just because... I'm running around with the kids. You eat. You probably don't get the chance to eat when you want to eat because you're so selfless, you're taking care of the little ones. So I just wonder if that has something to do with it, potentially, if you're a parent out there and you identify as someone who must be selfless because you have little human beings that are relying on you, maybe that's crossing over to other areas of your identity as well. So I would say that's something worth, that's something worth exploring also because I can only imagine... You have a, a little one, two, three, four, five years in, and all you know is being selfless for that for that creature. Creature, the human, little human. But I just I think of, of little little kids as little creatures. In a cute way, not a weird way. <laughs> so I wonder if that might have something to do with it. I don't know because I, I've never experienced that. I don't have that experience. But I can imagine that probably plays into it as well. So this is a very a very hyper conscious explorative episode where it's a good opportunity for you to sit down and say, okay, when's the last time, when's the, Taryn is doing singing lessons. She's been doing singing lessons, something she's wanted to do. She came to me and said, hey, what do you think? I said, yeah, sure. If it's going to fulfill you, do it. That's awesome. What is your version of that? What is your version of jujitsu? What is your version of singing lessons, art classes, whatever it may be, that the reason you're not doing it is not just because of finances? Maybe finances is the comfortable place you're willing to go where you say, you know, uh, 60 bucks a month for this spin class, just, I don't know, that, that would be really stretching it. When if there was $60 a month for something else completely unrelated, you'd be willing to do it. So maybe that's just a layer one truth. So dig into that. Do you, don't, do you not feel like you deserve it? Are you afraid to let yourself down? Are you afraid to disappoint others? Sit with that. That's my next level nugget. This is one of those internal searches we can talk about it and maybe something will break free but it's going to be what you do in your free time after this episode that i really think is the the most valuable piece this is a generous time of year the holidays and 
I love the generosity, but if you're investing a ton of money into other people, as much as I adore that, just ask yourself, you know, you're willing to spend a hundred bucks on that gift for that loved one. Are you willing to spend a hundred bucks on your own personal development? I, I want to see you grow. I want to see you become better. I want to see you investing in yourself. I just do. And, and I know that people investing in their own personal development, their own self-improvement, their own their own passions and their own purpose and their own growth, their own personal growth is going to be what's best for the world. So I encourage that. I'm not saying not to be generous. I'm saying be as generous with yourself as you are with others. And I think that that's going to be a much bigger, better, brighter future than what would have been otherwise. And I'm not saying that you should invest in us. I'm biased. So I I do think you should, because I think everything that we offer is super aligned based on what you hear on the podcast, but whatever it is for you, if it's a book, if it's a course, if it's a coach, therapy, a counselor, a therapist, whatever it may be, physical therapy, personal trainer, whatever it is, even if it's not NLU related, do it if you think it will benefit you in the long run. If you have not yet joined our private Facebook group, Next Level Nation, we'll have the link in the show notes as we always do, but it is a group of humans who have similar core values, similar core beliefs, and similar core aspirations to you. These are people who want to be more authentic, they want to be more vulnerable, and most of all, they want to get to the next level, whatever that means for them. It doesn't mean growing a massive business or becoming a millionaire or a billionaire, it means getting to the next level of their life. So if that resonates with you, link will be in the show notes. As always, we would absolutely love to have you there. This young 16 year old that I was on the zoom with the interwebs with was pumped and excited to grow and to learn. And I asked a question. I said, how did you, how did you become such a growth mindset when you're 16? Because I had more of a fixed mindset than him at 16 for sure. And he said, my mom, my mom puts on the podcast, uh, in the car every time we're in the car. And I was like, that is so cool. But anyways, when he heard the price, you know, he, he doesn't make a ton of money yet. He's young and he got scared and I, I am going to audio him and I'm going to say maybe group coaching is more aligned. Uh, group coaching is much more affordable than one-on-one coaching. That is for a reason. I do believe one-on-one coaching is more customized. I do believe it's deeper. I do believe for people that want to get to the next level, I do believe that's the best option. But There's something to be said for being on a team of like-minded people for a cheaper, more affordable price. And when I say cheaper, I mean more, more affordable. We've worked really hard on this program. The amount of value that this program will give you for the price point is wild. It's wild. So with the promo code NLU listener, you can go to the website, click the link in the show notes, NLU listener, it comes to less than $97 per month. Okay. If you've been curious if you've been out there like I really want to get a coach or I really want to do this but I'm not sure I and you're feeling like you don't want to invest in yourself or you're unsure you're reluctant give it a shot check it out a team of 10 like-minded people this is our 12th group we're about to close 13th group January 2nd a team of 10 like-minded heart-driven individuals ready to get to the next level health wealth and love this is a very well polished program at this point take the leap of faith Worst, worst, worst case of scenario, you pay for one month, you hate the program, and you tell Kevin and I, okay? That's the worst case scenario. My chair just broke. Sorry, that's why why I was laughing. It just broke. (laughs) Your chair just broke? Yeah. All right, so invest in group coaching. We're going to buy Kevin a new chair. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. If you've had the itch, if you've had the itch, but you're afraid to invest in yourself, please have the courage to give this a shot, okay? Worst case scenario... It's a month, okay, $97. So give it a shot, and uh, the link will be in the show notes. My goodness, sorry about that. Tomorrow, for episode number 1,551, what would happen if you started honoring yourself first? So similarly, in line to what Alan said, my chair's all Jeff. What if what's best for you is what's best for the world? I think we're going to go in a direction similar to that. I'm not really sure because it was an Alan thought, so I don't remember exactly the story for that episode. But as always, we'll make sure we add value and maybe you'll get a giggle or two. Also. Most likely. I think it's convenient. Whether they're laughing at us or with us. Either way, my chair. I almost did an ass over (laughs) tea kettle. Almost just happened here. I almost... 
went backwards. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. You are worth it. Next Level Nation.